Good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I am your host, Krista Porter, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Uh, Encompass Live is the Commission's weekly online event. We're a webinar, a webcast, an online show. Um, the terminology is up for debate, but whatever we are, um, whatever you want to call us, we are here live every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time. If you're unable to join us on Wednesday mornings, that's fine. We do record the show every week, and it is available on our website for anyone to watch. And I will show you exactly where that is after today's show. Both our live show and our recordings are free and open to anyone to watch, so please do share with any of your friends, colleagues, neighbors, family, anyone who you think might be interested in any of our topics. Um, they can join us for our live shows or watch our recordings. Um, we do a mixture of things here, book reviews, mini training sessions, interviews, basically anything live library related that really is our only criteria, something to do with libraries. Um, we sometimes do have Nebraska Library Commission staff do things that are um, presentations on topics, uh, programs, and services we offer here through the Commission, but we also do bring in guest speakers. And that's what we have this morning um, on the line with us um, from Valley Public Library here in Valley, Nebraska, is Claire Bouchong and Gary Brown. Hi, Claire. Hi, Gary. You're both there, right? Yes, we're here. We morning, good morning. Sound. Hi. <laughs> That's okay. Good morning. Um, and they have a presentation. They did. They got a, a grant for this um, great program to have microscopes in their library. Um, this is a presentation that was they did um, at our uh, state library conference, uh, librarian and school librarian conference in October. And I had a couple of different people mention to me that this is a cool topic and that we should bring them on the show to share with even a larger audience. So. Um, I will just hand over to you guys, to Claire and Gary, to take it away and tell us all about what you did with those microscopes in your library. Okay, thanks. Um, I'm Claire, and I'm the director here at Valley, and um, uh, I'll probably let Gary do most of the talking because he's the uh, microscope authority, but I um, uh, just wanted to welcome everybody and say thanks for attending. Um, we are pretty excited about our microscopes. It's been a really um, good thing for, for us here in the library, and um, uh, maybe uh, will inspire some of you to, to think about um, doing something similar at your place. Um, you, Gary, you want to go ahead and introduce yourself? And well, my name is Gary Brown, and I've been around microscopes both in an educational uh, setting and also professionally for quite a long time. And the um, last several years, I had an idea that it might be fun to put some microscopes where the general public could see it. And the library was a, a good place to start, I thought. So. Um, I'm going to tell you a little bit, of, a little bit about you know how we got started. But um, my my motto, I think, with microscopes is the more I see, the more I see. There's more to see, and, and that's kind of a little bit of a run-on sentence. But it dawned on me as I was walking past my micro, or my uh, sorry, yes, okay. Uh, some goldenrod in my backyard. I was kind of admiring the flowers, but I noticed that the goldenrods were humming. And I thought, well, that's kind of an unusual thing. So I broke off a flower, took it in, and shook it out over a piece of white paper, and I was amazed at the stuff that fell out. So I captured a couple things on camera. Uh, I have a soldier beetle here, and then I've got a cat that was residing somewhere within the florets of the goldenrod. And, uh, took pictures of these things and I got to thinking that the smaller and smaller you looked there was still something that was smaller than that and we get down to a electron micrograph here I borrowed from sciencephoto.com that shows how really small you can go um, looking around the, the neighborhood environment the roadside ditch uh, provided a lot of, of specimens and I went out with my specimen collector one afternoon and captured a jar full of whatever it might have been and took it back and uh, prepared some slides and took a look at it under the microscope. But this is a single-cell protozoan that lived in the ditch. And the beauty of this thing is that it's amazingly complex for no more than a single cell. The microscope was one that my father bought for me for Christmas. and. This is a good representation of what a, uh, a kid's microscope in 1955 looked like. And it opened up a world of fascination for me. 
looking through the microscope, this is what I saw in the field of my microscope, and you can see it's not much there. I'm not too sure there was anything there, but to a kid, it was a fascinating look, and it just kept me thinking, how do we move forward? So I thought about the library and came over and introduced myself to Claire and talked to her a little bit about putting some microscopes in the, in the library here in Valley. The plan was to get some kind of a per permanent facility, and, and Claire's been very generous with a very nice science table. Um, so we have a place to ha call home base. Um, I approached the science center and a couple libraries, and everything just worked out very well. I got a little star there saying science centers. I started out after college working in a science center, and that certainly uh, was an experience for me that showed you what was possible working with kids in science. Well, the first place I approached was the Edgerton Explorer Center in Aurora, Nebraska, which was very much like the science center where I had worked. And it's a, it's a facility that invites students and general public in for science-related activities. Um, and that seemed like a great place to go. The gal was uh, very willing to give us a table, much like what we have here in Valley, and we set up microscopes and got everything going. And you probably have to be a bit of a microscopist to answer the question, what's wrong with this picture? But um, you'll notice that the student's looking through the microscope eyepiece tube, and the other side should, should have a microscope eyepiece tube there, and it's gone. So I always keep reminding myself that we have to kind of be vigilant when we have microscopes out for the general public, because you just never know when um, something's going to take a hike. And we don't have a lot of trouble with that, but you know they're just they're going to mess with them. And um, fortunately, Gary stops in um, now and then and tells us what's missing and what's broken and uh, takes care of it. Yeah, we've been pretty fortunate. We really haven't had any problems. Um, at the Explorer Center, we set up a, a special microscope that's dedicated to a camera, and you can see the the large TV screen hanging above the microscope. Um, the microscope has no eyepieces, but it just has a camera. So for teachers who want to show things to a large group, it's a great way to, to get the image on the, on the television. And then sitting next to it is a, is a stereo microscope, which is good for specimens that are not tiny, 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 but are just small. So if a student wants to look at a butterfly wing or a fly face or a piece of sand or anything like that, uh, the stereo microscope's a, a great instrument to use. The Explorer Science Center does not have a checkout facility, but we do have it here. I don't know what happened here. <laughs> it went crazy on me. Okay. So we're back. We're back to the Explorer Science Center, and a, a student has a uh, a slide on his microscope and is just doing the work. But the nice thing about it is that they've got it set up like we do here in Valley, that the students can come and and prepare their own slides and look at the things that they want to look at. We've had a lot of fun with science days where the kids go out and collect their own specimens, and it's just fascinating to see what they return with. This is the table that Claire has dedicated to our microscopes in the Valley Library, and I think I'll let her tell about that since she's pretty much responsible for the way the table's set up and the daily watching over. Well, this this has kind of evolved. This is an early picture, so um, we've we've done a little redecorating. Um, this is just a um, uh, just a fold-up table, um, but we were careful to get one with uh, legs that were really secure just so things wouldn't move around so much because uh, people are going to bump into it and, um, and that sort of thing. And the, um, the little stand that the television uh, monitor is on is just a box full of books covered in paper um, and it's pretty sturdy there. Um, and we've got, you know, power cords and petri dishes and 
um, collection of, of various things. This just shows the two stereoscopes and the one um, compound scope that's connected to the to the TV. We do have another compound scope on there now, um, and a collection of books we keep there near the microscopes, so people who are interested in those can easily find them. <coughs> All right, Let's move along here. Okay. Well, we have a an inexpensive eyepiece camera attached to our our small television monitor and again it's a great way to draw attention uh, if you have a group coming in to put a, a slide on the microscope and turn on the TV and, and it really pulls people over to the table to see what's going on so for the general groups it's easy to stimulate some interest and for the large groups that come for science days or special activities it's a great way to to share uh, images that everybody can see very easily this this eyepiece camera is a is a real simple little uh, USB camera that just plugs straight into a TV. It doesn't need a, cam a computer or anything like that, and the only thing it does is projects an image. Our strategy we selecting was selecting uh, appropriate microscopes, and Claire kind of got the permanent display organized and has done a really great job in finding all sorts of uh, related books and projects. So our, our science table is really looking very good here. Um, after we got the table set up, then we had a little conference on how we were going to get the potential user interested and what kind of things could we do for them so that when they did check out the microscope, uh, they could use it effectively. And Selecting microscopes, since I've been around microscopes for a long time, I had quite a variety from which to choose. Um, a question in my mind forever has been, is any microscope better than no microscope? And there's always a discussion as to where you should start, how sophisticated or simple should it be. And I think that I am in the position where just giving a kid a simple microscope is a great way to get them started. If you have something that's a little more complex, uh, it takes a little more preparation to work with the student, but um, they get a little better image quality from it. So I don't know that there's any hard, fast rule that says you have to start here or there, but just to have something is, is the place probably we would want to start. Now, Claire's been working on our evolving display, and um, it's really getting to, to be quite a science station. We have an official sign now that she had made. And, um, the books and pamphlets and petri dishes and everything are out. So when the people come to the library, they can look at it. And maybe you'd like to share how that works on a daily yeah, basis. Yeah, and I should say we've also replaced the library stool there with a with a kid friendly. <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> with a kid friendly stool. Um, so the um, people who, whose eyes can't quite reach the microscopes can um, can take a peek there too. Um, we just keep this close to the circulation desk, and um, so it's it's in in view as soon as people walk in the library. And um, uh, kids are are very much drawn to it. Um, uh, one of the things that kind of surprised both of us is the um, uh, the younger kids are the ones who are um, most drawn to the table, um, and we do require adult assistance. Um, uh, if the um, library staff doesn't have time, we always tell the parents or grandparents that um, they need to be with them there at the table. Um, but there's hardly anything that they can um, uh, that that can really cause problems um, with with a little bit of adult supervision. They're probably not going to break anything. One of the things that we have done is um, to take the slides to the desk, and those are available on request. We keep a number of specimens um, out in the petri dishes for the kids to look at in the stereoscopes because those are really more interesting for the younger kids anyway. And um, then anybody who wants to do a, a project with slides can always ask at the desk for some help with that, and um, that kind of keeps keeps down on the clutter just a little bit. Um, it doesn't really require much staff time. Um, I, I think that um, most of the kids who are in here regularly kind of 
know the drill that they're supposed to wait for us to um, have a chance to go over and help them if they need any help and um, it, we don't find that it takes takes a lot of staff time. <laughs> Um, I should also say my sister is a recently retired um, middle school science teacher and so uh, some of the things that we've added to the table are courtesy of her, um, but um, she's also kind of guided me in the direction of finding other materials and um, I've done a little exploring on my own um, and uh, worksheets and um, that sort of thing is available online, and uh, we've we've had um, we've found quite a few interesting things just just online. <clears throat> uh, the magnifying glasses are are good for the younger kids. We keep them out there at the table as well, and a lot of times the um, preschool and uh, early elementary age kids are. Um, just as happy to take a magnifying glass and, and take a look at something that they can recognize um, <clears throat> as, as they would be to, to stand at the microscope. It's a little bit less frustrating for them to be able to just hold that lens. And here's a, a little bit of our collection of books there. Um, I didn't add a bibliography slide, but um, I'd be happy to share titles and authors with anybody who would like. And like Gary said, people are always bringing in things and, and I tend to um, do that. That white moth was um, next to my security uh, station at home, uh, was drawn toward the light, I guess, in the middle of the night. And um, so I have found that I am thinking now in terms of um, how things would look under the microscope as I go for walks or whatever. Um, the kits were the um, result of the grant. Um, we did receive a grant, um, one of the youth grants for excellence to make these kits available for checkout. Um, so um, that's, that is the grant portion of the presentation. Gary put together the the kits, we purchased the um, carrying cases, but he put together this nice little stand um, that holds the microscope securely in the in case. And then it also has a drawer for some of the materials that we check out with them. The program portion of our grant was um, an orientation. We do other programs with the kits as well. Um, kind of augmenting our um, science station, um, but but we do require a, a brief orientation. The staff can do that easily. Um, there's not a lot to it, just some of the basics of uh, how to get the most out of it. Yeah. Our, our slide projector has a mind of its own here this morning. But if you're interested in what's in the kit, um, the microscope is a Swift student microscope. And just a little bit about the Swift company. They were around for about 70 years um, and dedicated their focus in microscope to the educational market, uh, elementary through university. And this, this microscope is a typical high school level microscope. So optically, it's, it's very good. and Mechanically, it's well built, and it also has the adjustments on it necessary to get a, a good image. We found some really nice nylon carrying cases that have been, uh, you know, built for the purpose there for microscope storage. But because they're so large, we had a we had room to build a little accessory drawer that we could put at the bottom and then set the microscope on top of it. Uh, gave us a place to put the drawer with the stick all of stuff in it. In the, in the kit right now are a, a box of plastic slides that are blank with plastic cover slips so this, the users can prepare their own slides and we have we bought 100 prepared slides and, and broke them into 10 boxes so we have an assortment of 10 different slides that they can check out independently that are all ready to look at. Uh, we have petri dishes that are 
uh, I suppose six inches in diameter, and we have uh, plastic pipettes for collecting water samples and things like that that are consumable items. So they can use them, and if they don't come back, we, we aren't too concerned. We have quite a few to go with. Um, the instruction manual, we put together a, a little laminated sheet that tells a little bit about how to use the microscope, and we also have a sheet that tells how to use the telephone camera mount. Um, we, found a, we found a very inexpensive little camera mount that really works very well and can attach a, uh, an iPhone or any phone to a camera or to the microscope, and, and you can take some really great pictures really easily. That's the project budget that I submitted that was kind of an estimate, um, but we were right in there. Um, uh, so this includes the um, uh, consumable supplies, the things that we don't want back, and uh, the things that we will keep here in the library, as well as the microscopes. And um, Gary's company donated um, uh, two-thirds of the cost of the microscopes for our um, local in-kind um, in kind match. This is the instruction card that we made for the phone mount. Um, uh, it's not, um, when we first started um, trying to use it, it was a little bit frustrating, so we thought um, uh, a few pointers would help, and it, it really goes together pretty well um, with a systematic approach. And these um, next few slides, um, some some photos that we took just using a phone um, with um, with that phone mount. Um, so this is just um, um, polarized effect of, of grains of sand that we found just right outside the door. <coughs> these are um, some of our prepared slides. And um, I'm, I'm always looking for an excuse to collect water. That's one of my favorite parts of using the microscope is to find um, plant or animal um, specimens. Um, so the TV screen comes in handy with the, with the um, moving things because they, can, uh, they move pretty quickly across the screen and it's, it's kind of hard to capture those. Um, but um, the TV allows people to stand back and watch um, and as far as photography the, the plants are they hold still a little bit better. <laughs> um, one of the things that we've been with having a few more microscopes is to um, uh, be able to have multiple uh, scopes um, at a uh, science table at a microscope table at, at one of our science days. And we um, have kind of drawn in some of our local professional scientists to do presentations. Um, Linda Gergen, pictured here, is on our uh, library board, and uh, she has some non-microscope-related activities here. Um, we have participated in the Nebraska Science Festival the last couple of years, and that's been, uh, been fun. All you have to do um, to uh, be a site um, at, at that is to just sign up. Um, on their website, and we have done that um, twice, and uh, it's been it's been a real fun activity for everybody. Um, a lot of people that normally don't stop by the library. Uh, we've offered microscope activities for um, various little science day activities and um, we have a, a weekly after school program and uh, we have uh, had some microscope um, activities there. We usually, with that, we try to kind of divide the kids into groups by age um, and have different activities for the younger kids than we have for the older elementary school kids. Um, uh, we've had a few special classes um, and uh, we've run microscope activities during summer reading. One of our orientation sessions. 
we also took microscopes or one of the microscopes to the um, open house that was held right before school um, at the elementary school this year um, had that on display too. Um, one of the things Gary kind of alluded to already is that um, the um, stereoscopes are a little bit easier to manage for um, just walk-in traffic, uh, people going up to the table and seeing what they can can see under the microscope. Um, this, the stereoscopes are a little bit easier to, uh, to use and they also, um, uh, when the kids can recognize what the specimen is before they put it under the microscope, that's a little bit more fun than just looking at something on a slide that, that can't really be identified. So, and the, the kids are easy to transport. We um, can can take them, like I said, to the school or to the YMCA or um, uh, where we need to, to run with them. Are we about the end yeah. here? Yeah. Well, this has been a this has been a most fascinating project. I hope it's just getting started. Um, We've had unimaginable success and interest here in the Valley Library with our project and uh, the ability to have a couple of microscopes that are available to be checked out is is really uh, an unusual thing I think for a library. I've, I've been kind of going around and talking to various libraries and not too many have uh, microscopes so we're kind of encouraging you know to get some more microscopes spread around. We included this slide. Gary was um, uh, commended for his work on this project at uh, Advocacy Day last year. Well, we would like to invite you all to participate, and we are sponsoring a a grant, uh, I believe we'll call it, where you can apply for a microscope for your library and we're just getting started on what you know what we're kind of thinking about but um, your proposal can be for a circulating kit or a permanent microscope station like we have here in Valley we'd like you to include a program component uh, with some orientation to using a microscope and a matching component of three hundred dollars we thought um, which is about the value of the microscope kit that would indicate your interest in providing the, the support material like Claire's done here with the books and and other accessories that would make the microscope a, a more intriguing uh, addition to the library. At the, at the moment I have two microscopes that are available and if you'd like to apply um, the deadline is March 1st of 2017 and we're going to we're going to put the application instructions on the library's website here pretty soon. So, I don't know if there are more. Okay. The contact information, I guess you'll see this all on your screen and feel free to call me anytime you have questions. I love to talk to people about microscopes. I'm there. So this is the end of our presentation, and if you have questions or comments or anything, we'll we'll field them. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, great. Thank you, Claire and Gary. That's that's awesome that you're doing that little. I guess maybe call it a mini grant or whatever. <laughs> um, running microscopes to other places. Um, well, definitely when you get it up on your website, I've linked to um, um, something I didn't mention at the beginning. I do collect any websites or links mentioned throughout the show um, to include in the recordings af page afterwards. Um, and I've got Valley's uh, website up there as well so that you can um, go to it when it is available. So uh, definitely let us know about that here at the commission and we'll help promote it um, okay. out across the state. Um, do, uh, so if anybody does have any questions, go ahead and type into your question section of your GoToWebinar interface and I can grab them for, I can read them for you um, out to Claire and Gary. Um, 
you said it what you say obviously this has been a very successful program for you <laughs> um that's very popular do you have any sort of statistics on it or is it just people are every day coming in and using it so it's kind of doesn't really need <laughs> Oh, it's it's mostly anecdotal. Actually, the the circulation numbers on the kits are not very high. Um, when um, uh, how long when have you I, had them? Actually, I, I wasn't sure about that. When did you actually get the kits? Was that from just this most recent yeah. grant? Yeah, it okay. was. Um, yeah, it was the last um, last the the last year's grant. Um, we. Um, hoped to have them ready for the spring school semester and it just took a little bit longer than than we thought it would mm. um, so they didn't um, I can't remember the date but it was maybe February um, or even March by the time we actually had the kits ready to go and um, I, I had polled some people in the um, local um, homeschool communities um, before I wrote the grant just to um, determine whether there was interest in that community um, and uh, really got a very enthusiastic response but um, they haven't really come through with with checking them out so much at this time um, once again the the people who are most interested in them tend to be the younger kids and so we yeah. we check them out to families um, uh, usually with elementary school aged children um, but we hope that that maybe um, the availability will um, become a little bit more widely known um, and and I I think that the the responses that we got when we initially contacted the the homeschool community indicated that there there really um, uh, is a need for that out there and and that if if we connect with the right people they will probably want to use that um, quite a bit mm -hmm. um, their portability has made them um, uh, easy to um, to take um, to take out to outreach, so so we're we're using them, but maybe not circulating them as much as we hope that that, that we will eventually. Um, and as far as the science station, yeah, that's a pretty much um, daily. Um, you know, it gets gets a little bit of daily attention, um, more so on the days when we have um, kid activities after school, mm -hmm. and um, uh, on the when the lights. One of the things that, that new families notice immediately when they walk in and um, are, are kind of negative. So, um, so just uh, people come in the library basically, and um, uh, then we are able with the science station and the additional um, microscopes in the kits to um, to offer more microscope activities at um, uh, when we're offering programs that are science related. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was wondering because you had mentioned, I think, in the description, and I heard about that there was your your science station, and I was like wondering how, what exactly that meant for a science station. But it's it's actually very cool that it's so simple, all a table and some things in the table, and it doesn't take very much to create some a really good focal point that will that attracts people's attention. Yeah, it's very simple, and um, you know we can. Um, we can add to it along, but um, uh, really doesn't uh, like I like I mentioned earlier doesn't really require a lot of a lot of um, uh, oversight by staff, um, and um, uh, it's it's just nice to to have it up there and and have another area of interest in the in the library. It's next to the um, kids' computer station too, so uh, there's some. Overlap there um, with with kids moving back and forth between the computers and the and the microscopes. Mm -hmm. um, and those um, Microsoft kits are very convenient. Um, was that where did you? I mean, I assume Gary, you knew about those. Where did where did you? Is that something that you put together yourself, or is that just a thing that exists that you were just able to you know you knew about and just purchase? Like, does all that already come together? I see. You know, it's got the carrying case and everything, obviously. The nylon carrying case is, is commercially available and is designed for carrying a microscope, but the drawer was something I came up with as a way to store the accessories uh, mm -hmm. because there was so much room in the storage case. Rather than get a smaller case, I thought, well, let's fill up the bigger case. So I made that little sliding drawer and table so that the microscope could sit above the drawer and all the accessories could 
be easily stored. Okay. So it's a real nice way to have everything packed in the kit and it's not plopping around and um, it just it's very handy. Mm -hmm. and the, and the, the kit is, uh, like I said, it's kind of semi soft side, but it's mm -hmm. got a, a, a plastic form in it, so it's rigid, but yet it's not heavy and it's easy to carry. And the microscope is strapped in, so it's um, really conducive for carrying from place to place. Mm -hmm. I could see that if you didn't want to build a, a little cabinet like, like Gary did for us, though, that you could easily use a, a plastic box um, with the uh, extra materials in it. Uh, you wouldn't, wouldn't need to construct a, a case like that. Um, that would work fine. Like some, some small Tupperware thing or something like that, right. some plastic thing yeah. that would fit in there. Mm -hmm. um, where someone wants to know where um, where would you where can you where do you buy this kind of things, the microscopes and the and the cases and whatnot? If somebody someone did want to do start something up themselves, is there particular websites or look or stores you would recommend? I didn't quite understand that our audio is pretty oh sorry um someone wants to know where you would buy these things where a, a website or companies to order the microscopes and the and the kits or then the pen the cap packaging well a lot of that i can supply but it's online in a lot of different locations the the thing you have to do is kind of uh, i guess be 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 aware of what you might be getting when you order it online because there's all kinds of stuff, and some of it's great, and some of it's the other side. So mm -hmm. they can call me, and I can certainly help out uh, with questions, and then maybe direct them to a, a good, reliable spot. But yeah. the, the things that were commercial for us were the carrying case, uh, the Petri dishes, the uh, pipettes, the slides, and things like that. And then the, the only thing I made was that little drawer. But uh, you can outfit these kits any way you want, just whatever you think may be interest for your your specific needs. When I wrote the proposal, the um, things that I found to include in the proposal were um, I, I found on Amazon. Uh, so a lot of that sort of thing is is pretty easily available. Um, Gary kind of led me in some other directions to um, uh, get some. Um, um, oh. He had he had other other sites where he did more um, uh, not retail. Um. <laughs> anyway, he he found some less expensive ways of getting some of those things. Mm. You go to commercial sites or something more direct. Right, right. Yeah. Microscope supply places. He he had like exactly. more resources. Yeah, that's the kind of thing that I'm sure most people would not have a clue like, what is a good microscope supply company <laughs> or, you know, or advice on what to buy. Right, but right. That'd be why we call Gary and ask. <laughs> well, I'd love to speak to anybody that has questions, and I'll certainly try to help however I can. But mm -hmm. there's, a, there's just, you know, your imagination is your only limit. So once you've decided what you'd like to try, then... You know, just talking to people about which way to go is, is helpful. But mm -hmm. anytime anybody wants to call, I'm available, except really late at night. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think, yeah, do it during regular business hours generally, yes. <laughs> um, all right, does anybody else have any last-minute questions? I've gotten all the ones that we had. So see if anybody has anything else they want to ask while we still have uh, Claire and Gary on the line. I'm glad you guys were able to get things going for this morning. Uh, um, get uh, your com com working computer good to go and, and ready to present for us. <laughs> Sorry about the delay. No, not a problem at all. Everyone stuck around waiting. I let everybody know that you know it happens. We have technical issues sometimes. There's been a few times we've had to cancel the show over the years um, for things like that or. I think mostly uh, the internet is down completely has been one of our <laughs> so much much worse than just oh we need to just find a different computer or get something updated. <laughs> All right, well it doesn't look like anybody's typing in any urgent questions at the moment, so I think maybe we um, can wrap it up for this morning. Uh, unless you guys have any last minute uh, anything you want to say. No, we just would be happy to answer questions if you think of them later and um, check our website out pretty soon. We'll have um, uh, information about um, this little grant that Gary is offering and um, 
we'll be able to uh, put you in touch with him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that that is awesome. Like I said, yeah, let us um, let me know here at the commission, and we'll make sure we put it out on our blog and our our where our places to to get the word out to everybody. Okay. Awesome. All right. Well, thank you very much, Claire and Gary, for being on the line with us this morning. Thanks for the opportunity. Um, I'm going to pull back presenter control to my screen now. There we go. Should be popping up. All right. Yes. So that will wrap it up for this morning's show. Um, it is being recorded and will be here on our website, um, our Encompass Live website. If you go to our main site and you go, um, luckily, uh, nothing else is called Encompass Live, it seems yet. So if you just Google um, or search for anything, any, anywhere you like for Encompass Live, you should come up to our website. And underneath our upcoming shows, we have our archive sessions links. And this is where today's will be posted. Uh, we'll have the presentation. We'll have a recording. Um, the links, actually, I'll have a handout to uh, Clinton. This is to different things. The website I did, I, um, Valley's website, the Nebraska Science Festival that you had mentioned, I put a link to that, and a link to um, the youth grants that we actually have here at the Library Commission, um, which is what um, Claire, they had gotten the funding for for those kids. This is off of our and, um, Library Commission um, Nebraska Library Commission website, we have um, various grants available here, and they're all listed here on the website, but this is the Youth Grants for Excellence ones. Um, now let's see, let's go back to the schedule. This is where you can look up the one. There's all the different grants. The youth ones just wrapped up for this most recent year in um, just last month were announced. So if you are looking to do this through the commission, potentially um, look again for um, sometime in 2017. As you can see here, the schedule generally goes summer um, into fall for um, doing the youth-specific uh, grants. But we have other ones as well, as you can see here. Uh, let's get back to this. So. Um, the recording will be available on the website. I will let you all know when it is ready. Um, Claire, if you want to, you can email me your PowerPoint presentation, and I can include that as well. Okay. So whenever you get a chance to get off the line um, this afternoon. Um, and like I said, um, everyone who attended this morning and who registered will be getting an email let you know when the, it is ready. Um, so I hope you join us for next week when our topic is um, books, best new teen books of 2016. Uh, Sally Snyder, who's our coordinator of children and youth, young adult library services here at the Library Commission, along with uh, librarian Jill Annis, who's from uh, Grandview Middle School here in Nebraska, will be with us um, here to talk about um, new books that came out um, for teens, uh, middle and high school age. Uh, so if you're looking for new titles to buy um, for your library, check us out. Um, sign up for that and our upcoming shows. Um, we've got a couple of them scheduled already here in January, and I'm working on a few other ones. So you'll see more sessions coming up in there, so keep an eye on that. Um, also, Encompass Live is on Facebook. If you are a big Facebook user, please do give us a like, and you will get notifications. We post when um, sessions are available, reminders to log in on the fly here. When the recordings are ready, I post on here. So if you are big on Facebook, do uh, give us a like over there and to keep up with what we're doing here on the show. Um, other than that, that wraps it up for this morning. Thank you very much, everyone, for attending. Thank you, uh, Gary and Claire, for being for this this morning. Um, luckily, we didn't have too much trouble with all the technical issues. Only started a little bit late, so I think we are good. All right. Thank, thank, you. thank you very much, and we'll see you next time on Encompass Live. Bye-bye.